Yeah. Hello, everybody. Here is Heidi in Italy from the wisdomfactory.net. And these are conversations that matter and actually also African dialogues. Because last year I was at the conference, integral conference in Africa, in South Africa, in Johannesburg. And there I met many interesting people. And one of them is Dumi. I have to read your name. Dumi, Dr. Dumi Sani Mayakt Lela. Is it right? That's perfect. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. And uh, it's it, uh, Dumisani Magadlela and uh, the Zulu. So, but please just call me Dumi. Dumi. Okay. That's so much easier to me because the names are difficult to pronounce. Yeah. Anyway, I'm so interested in it. And uh, in, in Africa, I had uh, no idea before, you know, I just took this occasion with the integral conference and then I learned such a lot about it. And there is something which you seem to be working quite about the name Ubuntu. I didn't have any idea before what it meant. And you put it together with integral theory. And this for me is mind blowing. So uh, it might be interesting also to the listeners. I, I hope so, because many of them <laughs> are integrally informed. And so I would like to ask you, first of all, what is Ubuntu? And what has it to do with integral? <laughs> Thank you, Heidi. It, a two pronged question. So I'm happy to answer that starting with the first one. Uh, what is Ubuntu? Ubuntu is an ancient uh, human philosophy or principle of a way of living, a way of being that recognizes that I cannot be fully me if you can't be fully you. In other words, we are intricately interconnected. It's not just human beings, but all other beings that we need to respect each other as we are. So in other words, I am me because you are you. I am because we are. In other words, for me to be fully me, you have to be fully you. If you cannot be fully you, then I can't really be fully me. When you have the space and the scope and opportunities to be fully who you were created to be, the capabilities, abilities that you were born with, what the gifts that you were brought here to, to share with others. If you cannot express those, because I'm either limiting you or I'm limiting the space for you to do that, then I cannot fully recognize my own or realize my own gifts in a way. I would think I am doing that, but I'm limited by the fact that you're limited. In other words, if you are limited, I, I'm, I deny myself. If I limit you, I deny myself to know your brilliance, your excellence that you bring to the world. You, I become better when you are at your best too. We both benefit from each other's greatness. That I is, am because you are. That is great because it is so fostering collaboration and it's so in my own interests the best thing is if i help you to to become whatever you can be that is so opposite to what we are living and yeah and if i can come in there in fact when it it is the recognition that my greatness is intimately intricately interconnected to yours and we won't, I won't know that because I've either done something to reduce you to my understanding or my created narrative about you to say you are this or you are that. It's my frame. And the in integral frame takes everything together and says, you are you. And wherever you are, there you are you can be best set when you can be in a space where you can fully express all the talents, gifts, everything that you have. When that part is narrowed, whether it's the psychology, psychological development or spiritual uh, constraints or emotional 
part where some things are not fully developed, all that, it's, it's a woundedness on the human spirit that shows up through someone that has been limited in that way. And this is why it is so critical that as coaches, for example, as people that do work on human development, we understand the work of integral, whether it's, uh, it, it doesn't matter whose integral frame we use as long as we understand the integral. Because some people shift the quadrants around, but understanding the interconnectedness the integral nature of it because ubuntu is a systems philosophy it's a global human philosophy but it's expressed differently in different parts of the world and this is why we find that in 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 africa in south africa in southern africa the nguni there is the, the ndu which is the godliness of ubuntu which means i am because we are i recognize myself in you so i might Greeting in Zulu is Sawubona, exactly like that. Sawubona, which means I see you. I see you as you are, not as I would like to define you, but you have the scope to be you. So Ubuntu and Integral are both powerfully systemic theories that uh, principles for life that recognize the interconnectedness and the linkages among ourselves between you and me, the connection that we felt that like we've got to talk again in that meeting room at the end of the conference there. And with others in that, there is a connection that's, that's is why it feels so good when you do something great for someone without expecting anything. Because guess what? You're doing it for yourself too. We are connected. Yeah, this is really, I mean, surprising for me that we as western at least humanity we seem to have forgotten that and i have to tell you in the the first speaker nuseba i think on the conference when he was saying that the worst thing europeans have done was not to extract uh, the goods and the, the richnesses of the countries but to export their mindset you know, and their way of living. And as you are now with the, with the shirt, European shirt, you know, behind you are the, the African colors. So we seem to have colonized the whole world. Maybe not more anymore the colonization which we had before, like, you know, invading the countries. Now we have invaded the minds. And this principle, which you are calling, uh, which you are naming Ubuntu, we did have that too, I think. We yeah. had the, in, the help each other and it's sort of disappearing. Everybody is alone and, you know, so how is that? Uh, is this happening also? Yeah, in, in... yeah. and it, it's true. It is there, it's everywhere. This is a human condition. The part uh, about uh, saying that it's called Ubuntu, it's an expression of it in the local dialect, the local language. But Ubuntu is a, it's, it's, it's wherever you find human beings. Like what you saw recently in Australia with the fires, people from all over the world rallying together to say, let's do something about this. Let's support the Australians, the, including the animals. That is how human beings are when there are major natural disasters like we saw with the tsunami and everyone rallying to support that. What we saw with the devastation of whole countries after the Second World War and countries coming in to say, let us help rebuild. That's how human beings are. But there is something that is so damaging in other ways of being that focus only on the individual. The separation that has been taught, because it is taught, is what is wounding, damaging humanity globally. Yeah, and and there is a part about, you mentioned colonize, colonialism and that. The importation into other parts of the world, ways of being, some are spiritual, religious, or, or, or in terms of practice, some business practices, some that are efficient and work for business. But the, the mistake, as, as the, the opening speaker, the keynote speaker was saying in the conference, 
integral Africa, is that we, as Africans or as other people in other parts of the world, imported whole what came from other parts of the world, especially the Western world, Europe and the Americas and others, and, and have taken everything and neglected a part of who we are that the Western world needed to meet with us as equals in seeing that they can benefit so much from our way of being, which sometimes has been ridiculed as, you know, Africans are this and that. Those are labels that don't serve us. But those are labels we use to justify imposing our own ways on them. And therefore not learning what works. Ubuntu is what the world needs now, more than ever. We know that. But we won't see the value of it because we, we, the, the dominance of the paradigms is that the Western paradigm of the individual over the collective is currently dominant. Ubuntu says, let's go back because it's, it's our home. Ubuntu is in everyone, is home, is coming back home. We need to come back home to recognizing that we are one species and we are one interconnected part of an ecosystem called life on this small planet in the vastness of space. So we need to work together in that, as Bill Nye has, has said in some of his quotations. We need to understand that. We all come from Africa, as they have said. Scientists prove that. But, so this is why it feels home when you're here. And Ubuntu is still here and is alive and well and spreading around the world now more than ever before. Yeah, that's good. And in integral Ken Wilber terms, we would say that we have given too much um, attention on the me, I, uh, uh, in the upper left quadrant and on the yeah. upper right quadrant. We can do that. And yeah. we see everything only by the doability, but we have lost to understand that life is a whole system. The planet is a whole system and we are part of it. And this, I really do think that's the European um, error because we say, cogito ergo sum, I think, and that's why I, I live, no? And not yeah. as you said before. So we and have uh, um, diminished the human, um, how can I say, the, the sens more sensitive part, the more uh, compassionate part, because this is, you cannot see that in the microscope. That's not existing. So we have eliminated that. And with that, we have this mindset that Africans, oh, they are primitive. We bring them the good things and we to learn something from them? No. And this, uh, what Ken Wilber says, this is, uh, an, how do you say, uh, transcend and include. We didn't include. We only sort of transcended, went away, away and away, but we didn't include the humanness. And so we didn't recognize the gifts which you as a country or as a culture could, could offer to us or many other cultures, you know, because yeah. there was this feeling of superiority. And I do see that still, you know, and that is really lately in the last <laughs> few months or last years, I got so aware of it how we are still in this mindset without even noticing. We think we yeah. do all the best, you know, and we, mama mia, I, I really, I'm sort of ashamed because I didn't know that before until I got these bangs <laughs> against the head. And I notice it in myself too. And I'm really, I'm, how can I say, I'm horrified by that. Because, because of this mindset, we could do so much bad things to the world, including now the climate crisis and things like that. Oh, it's not only climate crisis, the whole crisis of the, of the, of the planet, which is caused by the mindset that I can just take, 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 and give you what I think is right for you. But I don't even ask if you want it, you know. This yeah. mentality is... Oh gosh, I, I'm doing a rant because it's really sort of overwhelming me what we have neglected to learn from people like you, you know? Yeah. So I'm yeah. so grateful that you are talking with me. <laughs> it, it is so important that we, we learn to respect each other in spite of the 
the cultural and and the inherited and taught perceptions of each other. You say earlier that uh, the Western way of focusing on the mind, and that we must, uh, as, as, as Ken Wilber said, we must transcend and include, and we've forgotten to do that or missed the point in doing that. Uh, one thing I would like to share with, with, with our, our, our listeners and viewers is that there are ways of being that the world needs that are they are alive and well in other parts of the world. When we travel, when we go and work with others in other parts of the world, whether we're business people or tourists or in whatever capacity or working in aid programs, it is very important for us to go with an open heart to engage and learn and then learn to listen and loosen our grip on the other. You know, I've got this uh, talking stick with this South African colors that I use in, in, in sessions. And we need to loosen our grip. If it's, our grip is too hard, we lose the opportunity to, to get the other's perspective. And we come with beliefs and values that are ingrained, embedded, and embodied in us. And we lose the opportunity to connect and engage with not just compassion and empathy, but with respect and understanding that there is a way of life and a way of being that was there that has been either disrupted or disturbed that is actually of value. Mm -hmm. And I always say, Heidi, history is unpredictable because those that write history about what is Africa and African have they, uh, their own uh, interpretations of what they saw and, and their own meanings to what they attached to what they put together. So there is one thing that we say in Africa, we say uh, the history of the hunt will always glorify the hunter until the lions have their own storytellers. <laughs> yeah. So until the lions have their own storytellers or the animals have their own storytellers, the history of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. Hunt. Yeah. The hunter tells the story. So this is what we see about everything that's been written. And there is enough evidence of that. And, and intentional destruction of whole ecosystems and whole human systems around the world. So we need to go back home to being more humane, have more Ubuntu. Because it's not about our mindsets. Our mind is one part of who we are. Our heart set, in my view, is more important. You have the mindset, but listen more, tune in more, to the frequency of your heart set. And your heart set knows home, which is in relationship to another and is connected to and respect another being as they are, not using the lenses and the frames that I either inherited, borrowed, or created, but are superficial. The heart always knows that this is right, this is wrong. And that's why people know that. So you look at extraction of natural resources around the world. Who is doing that? We can do it. We can do it differently. We can have collaboration and cooperation and, and support and beneficiation to support those that are in spaces where their, their geographies need more support. When we are humane like that and not going with the view to extract and benefit only, but to support and build a partnership and collaboration and, and do that. But the way the whole global system is arranged is such that uh, they are losers and winners. It doesn't have to be like that. As human beings, if one loses, we all lose. One yeah. wins over others, there is no benefit. And this is why we have so few people that are billionaires around the world and, and so many poor people. We are human. We can do better than this. Yeah, and you know, all these billionaires, I doubt that they are happy. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> that money is not really a creator of happiness or, you know, having a hundred villas or, or cars or whatever. So yeah. the, the coming back to the heart space, and this is also what connects you back to, to integral theory. Um, when he says we can verba uh, or spiral dynamics down back, coming out of the orange level where it's all about ornamentality, then going to green, which gets a little bit crazy 
on the other hand, yeah. and then coming to integral where these things can be integrated again and we can give value again to the heart and yeah. and have it at the same level as the mind. Don't throw away the mind. The green tendency is throw away the mind and don't think about the, the, yeah. the things they think the real solutions yeah. are, you know, but it's get integral. it together. And this is yeah. in Ubuntu, that's a wisdom which the which is already there independently yeah. from levels of development. It seems to be, as you say, the basics of humanity. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and we have we have neglected that because we yeah. we label it as this or that or as less than and look at we must have something that's scientifically tested and, and that. And neuroscientists have actually found that uh, we we are we are born with that inherent uh, urge or need to connect and we are we are connected very the, the different neurons they have started that actually we are connected with that that's why if you're strong with your intuitive uh, powers and to connect you can actually find that it's easier to form relationships across levels across cultures across that because we find each other but there's too much the, what has been taught to separate and this is why one of the simplest things Heidi that you see around the world is you go to different parts of the world, people smile and greet you even when they don't know you. But in other cultures, that is very strange. Like, why are you smiling at me? Why are you greeting me? What do you want? Oh, I, I'm not, I don't connect with you. You don't exist in my world. And we're closed up like that. Mm -hmm. And it's very important. It's, I call it in, in my work on Ubuntu coaching, I call it conscious greeting. When you do conscious greeting, you connect to people easier because you you are consciously doing it you are intentional with your greeting at any point any moment and when you do that when you do conscious greeting we practice it with coaches give them exercises to do that and when people connect and greet consciously they are able to see each other where they are at and it can open up. It's easy when you go, say, to a bank or to, to a shop to buy buying some fruit. And the person that's checking you out, if it's not a robot very soon, you greet them and, and, and really greet them like you're really interested in them. Or someone who's helping you find something in the shop, greet them like you really mean it. They feel your genuine connection and they respond accordingly. It's yeah. easier sometimes when it's someone that's from a different culture, there's curiosity, but it can also be even more difficult because it's like, I don't see you, I'm not interested in you. Yeah, and the question is, uh, we didn't talk about your work on the one hand, so I would like you to, to talk a little bit about that. And the question I have before is, you are working mainly in Africa, so that means if you have to give these advices that this strange way of how we Westerners uh, are together. I mean, I have to say in Italy, when I came here 30 years ago, it was still people were greeting each other. Now they are like this too, you know. Does it mean that in Africa it's becoming like that too? And so you are trying to to prevent that by your work? Or what is your yeah. work like? Yeah, just, uh, just to mention that I, I work around the world, in fact. I currently serve as a trustee on the International Coach Federation uh, Foundation's Board of Trustees, which is the global body of coaches around the world. And so I serve on that, and I'm very grateful for that opportunity to serve uh, in my community of coaches globally as a, a part of the foundation. But I travel around the world also. I've lived in Japan briefly as a visiting professor, and I work with clients and coaches from all over the world. But my main focus, my clientele has been within, within Africa, and Ethiopia, to Ghana, and other parts of, of the continent, and in South Africa or Southern Africa mainly. And uh, I teach in, in, in business schools, universities on coaching and leadership and emotional intelligence, organizational culture, because these things are interrelated. And I, my, a big part of my work is to support leaders to, to wake up really to human connection which starts with that conscious greeting and leads to major business deals and doing business consciously and not just looking at the bottom line, which is the one, one it's, it's looking at things with one eye 
saying all that, that there is is profit. Business was initially really established for service. You're there to serve, not just the shareholder, but everyone else. Yeah, that's yeah. wonderful. So yeah. you, there's you a question should... you asked. I'm not, I haven't, I haven't come back to that. Yeah, that was the question. If it is uh, already changing so much yeah. in Africa. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah. let me get to that. Yes, uh, in urban areas around uh, different parts of Africa, you see more and more of that. But that those are with, with the imported Western, especially Western culture or cultures of saying, this is how we're going to do it. In Franco Francophone Africa, you'll see that. You'll see more of the French culture way of doing things. But people greet and they talk and they engage because that, that spirit of Ubuntu is there. People want to connect with each other because it's inherent to us. It's natural to who we are. But you go outside uh, the cities, uh, major urban areas, people there won't pass each other without greeting in most, most of the areas, to my knowledge. And I studied social and cultural anthropology, and I'm aware of that, that you'll find that in, in remote areas or other areas that have not been urbanized too much, there's, a, there's a, a likelihood that people will not pass each other without greeting and finding out how, how are things where you're coming from and how are things where, where you're going. And it, the people share that, but it's useful to do that. But there's an, my grandfather, would never allow me. If you heard that, I passed one villager in the rural village without greeting them. I would be in serious trouble. <laughs> because you're taught at an early age that greeting is the essence. You don't you pass someone and not greet. And then you meet them again in another area. And then what? And there's a story of this young, this young, young man. He was visiting uh, a rural area coming from the city. So he passed a, a group of, of elders and other people going to find his, uh, his uncle and his, his wife who lived in the village. Just, he, he just passed them, didn't greet them. Found that they had moved in that village where he thought they were in. And there was no one else to ask in that except those that he had passed without greeting. So he goes back there and, and just asks, uh, mentioning them by name, so-and-so, they live down the road here, and I see that uh, they, they, there's no one there, they've moved. And people didn't say, it's just ignored him for a second just to teach him a lesson. And then afterwards, someone says, uh, who are you? And they, he mentioned who he was, and then they greeted him properly and sat down and said, uh, what's your relation? And, and then greeted him and then connected with him and then found out what his story was. But before that, they just looked at him like you, he did not recognize or see our humanity before. But now that you need help, you want us to, you, you are, you're, you're talking to us. Before that, you didn't even say a word. It's so in many communities, it's strange for someone to pass without talking or to you meet someone in a corridor. Yeah, I had trouble before when I got to the urban centers and got to university and that I'll greet everybody and <laughs> soon realized uh, people some people look at you like what's wrong with you what do you want and then you, you just know, you learn yeah. that you don't have to do it all the time no but you can also see sometimes when you do it that people are really happy that you yes. do it you know yeah <laughs> I see that all the time yeah and that's yeah. that's also a good um uh, uh how do you say a good uh task to do, a good a practice to do, to, to greet. What I think it's also how you describe this, it's more, it's not saying, how, uh, how are you? How do you do or something? It's just a ritual of opening, of opening a, a, a connection. And yeah. we need to relearn that. And when we relearn to see the other people, as you say, then we wouldn't do any worse anymore, you know? Yeah. And I'll, I'll quote Alvin Toffler here, Heidi, because I see that we've got four minutes. Uh, Alvin Toffler's quotation, which says, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read or write, but it will be those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn what humanity, especially in the West, or those with the Western leaning, or Western 
ways of being you need to understand. And all of us, I, I'm, I'm trained in that myself, I'm wearing a Western shirt, is to, to understand that human connection is at the essence of us breaking through most of the things that separate, divide, and damage and destroy us and what we share. We need to reestablish the connections that will help us see each other again, to see each other again. We need to find each other. We need to come back home to not living in our head. The cognitive part is good. It's important. It helps us with that. But we need to come back to the heart. As <laughs> neuroscientists have found, there's more signals from the body or the gut to the brain than the other way around. So we need to come back to realizing that we're not our brains or our minds. We're human and they are, we have a brain. The brain doesn't have us. <laughs> That's a good ending word. We should remember that we are not possessed by the brain, but that we can use it when we need it, but that we are heart. Without the heart, nothing works. Without the brain, still something could work. <laughs> the mindset is good, but yeah. the heart set is better. It's good. I thank you so very much. And maybe another time we talk again. Hope to see Definitely. you. Definitely. Let's, okay. let's make another time. Thank you very much, yeah. Heidi. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.